Hi everyone, McBeard here, back with another deck guide for you. This time, we're taking a look at the new and improved, improved? We'll see. The new dwarves, and the new dwarves are all about big boosts, lots of armor, and resilience. Now, resilience is a throwback to how dwarves uh, used to be. In fact, there's been so many different good dwarf archetypes, it's hard to really throw back properly, but it usually involves stacking the row, and it usually involves carryover. Now, Carryover has been in a really weird spot over the last couple of months. It hasn't been used very often. Vandergrift added to the game. Gabor has been in the game for a while. But since the change to Adrenaline Rush, it hasn't really been... I mean, people weren't really using that card anyway. So Resilience has really taken a back seat. Carryover was a real... Uh, it haunted the game for a long time. Morkfarg, the old Morkfarg would come out of the graveyard at the beginning of the round. Deathwish used to carry over. It was really extra prevalent. Carryover was, uh, every faction had to do something with carryover. In fact, I believe Northern Realms was punished because they had very little of it. So now we're in a world where carryover through resilience is all, it's exclusively, almost exclusively, Scoia'tael Dwarves. So I want to take a look at how this deck looks these days. Now, of course, this is McBeard, so I took a little spin on it. So I want to show you what we're working with here. Now, this is Curious Forge, not just Resilient Dwarves, but I did fit in Shoop's Day Off, the Great Oak, and Radia into this deck, as well as the Resilient Bros, Zoltan, and Gabor. And Shoop does have a Resilient option, but, you know, we're, not, we're probably not going for that. We don't need to. Our Resilient cards are so good. So these cards, so Gabor is a Resilient Engine, meaning that if he stays on the board, even though his boost goes away, he immediately starts gaining points for you again. Zoltan, in this case, plays for eight points, and if you're playing for Mahakam Forge, plays with five armor. So because Resilience is a status and can't be locked, it's actually a real pain in the ass to deal with Zoltan if you don't have a Purify. So there's that as well. But even if you do have a Purify, and even if you have ways of dealing with Zoltan and Gabor, you have Figus, who is not just defending the row, but setting up Zoltan perfectly. So you have a lot of ways to really put your opponent in a weird spot round one or two, knowing that they're going to have to still deal with these bearded bros later on in the game. Down in the bronze core, of course, because we are playing Redia and we are playing Shoop, we are running one ofs. And I've got a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of stuff in here that I've tried. Now, I want to call out one card you're going to see in the gameplay, but you won't see in the deck list. In fact, actually, you know what? I might as well just put the deck list. I'm going to talk about this card, though. So I put in Dwarven Chariot instead of Dwarven Mercenary, but I'll talk about Dwarven Mercenary. Um, this card, if you want to play Oak or Redia or any other non-dwarf that you're not looking to play out of your hand right away, it's not that good. Now, this guy starts with one armor, so he will be able to take one damage. Um, but if you're taking any more damage than one, this card is really just not worth it. Now, obviously, I'm trying to fill slots here. You see some cheeky stuff like the Dryad Enchantress. Actually pretty good in this deck. Actually pretty good. But really, uh, we want to play cards that kind of always help our overall game plan. Certainly, these bronze picks are not for everybody. Dryad Enchantress, Dwarven Chariot, these things are not dwarves. And while that doesn't really matter if you're not running the Mercenary, it does matter if you're trying to get extra value from your Mahakam Guard and... Uh, Barkley Elves. There he is. <laughs> so these aren't dwarves, so they're not helping your dwarf game plan that much. However, I think they're doing enough to warrant their inclusion. Dwarven Chariot, I don't know. You could maybe just put this in as a trained hawk. The truth is there's really not a lot of choices. The only dwarves I'm not including are the Mahakam Volunteers, which have no pull, and the Mercenary, which is probably, you know, it's probably as competitive as Cleaver's Muscle, so maybe you could just put it in here, but you could run the Chariot as well. Um, you know what, it actually might be the Mercenary. The Mercenary actually might be the best thing in here as a singleton, so let's just keep it in. I'm glad we talked, though. I'm glad we talked, YouTube. Now, from here on, we had to make some cuts. We didn't include a lot of the new dwarves, such as Xavier and Paul and uh, and Yarpin. And considering Polly Dahlberg, I think Polly Dahlberg is kind of lame. So I probably will be cutting it once I find a better configuration. But he plays for six. He can't move an opponent, and the armor could be in inconsequential. So I feel like he plays severely below average, and I don't necessarily recommend it. But I'm not going to figure that out right now. You're going to get to the deck list that's in the video. Now, because we're playing a resilient deck, we have ways of punishing an opponent if they let the round go, and we can actually play cards. So we have actually some pretty slow plays here in the Dwarven Agitator and the Iron Falcon Troubadour. This encourages the opponent to kind of be disgusted with our slow play, play kind of extra heavy tempo and just pass when we're at seven cards and forcing me to go down in cards and ultimately into a place where I can't bleed. Um, but 
these, I mean, we do have some really, really big plays in some shoot plays, Redia. So we can come back with a huge amount of force. And then when we are in control of the game again, you play a couple of resilient units. Your opponent tries to fight it off. You keep pushing. And then round three finally comes around. Your opponent's maybe blown the entire load just to stay into the game. And you have like nine points still on the board. Not too bad. I'm still working on this deck. I think that there's a lot of nuance to this deck. Resilience, it's really kind of unlocking some forgotten parts to my brain. Very, very Gwenty though. Nice old school feel. And Dwarves, I love hearing the I love hearing the voice line. So check out the gameplay. I have two gameplays for you. One of them from Fight Night, uh, playing against a viewer, and another one just a good old fashioned ladder game. If you like the video, show me, tell me. Lots of ways to do it. Hit the thumbs up, maybe hit subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks everybody. Let's try, uh, let's try, uh, I want to play the, the Mahakam, this, this Redea Forge deck again. This Redea Shoop Forge deck again, which I think is, I don't know, seems good, right? Ah, Uprising again. You are here as a diversion, for my pleasure alone. For my pleasure alone. Whoa. This card might just be a bad card. Yep, the audience is making it very clear. You guys like yourselves some Fight Night. Whoa, Lady of the Lake. I thought this was a good card when it wasn't even six, when it was five. Seems like I would want to play Agitator here. Lady of the Lake. I played Lady of the Lake in... What deck did I play it in? There was a deck where I was convinced it was good. There was a deck I was really convinced it was just a solid, solid card. It was a Northern Realms deck, and it wasn't necessarily a shield boosty deck, but you play it for six, it has a shield, and it gives a shield. It's, like, pretty damn good card. My studies are more important than this. This. Look at Geralt's head. Geralt's head kind of has like a like a glitchy horror movie kind of like when your turn ends. Like depending on where the mouse cursor is, I think, when the turn ends. He just kind of like snaps in like like every horror game that just tries to glitch out a ghost and be like, oh, it's so glitchy. Humans don't move like that. She has a book named after her. Why isn't she a leader? So you just play like really, really slow if you have your if you have your resilient units, I guess. And then when it comes to round two, the opponent can you can start playing in, but then you can play your resilient stuff to go into round three, potentially. Do I like any other games besides Gwent Witcher? Hype for anything this year? Well, I was hyped for Resident Evil 3, but now I'm not. Um, I am hyped for Cyberpunk Last of Us 2. Last of Us 2 is delayed indefinitely, so now I'm not. Cyberpunk uh, hasn't been delayed yet, but, you know, anything can happen. Uh, I'm excited for... I play Path of Exile, but I'm getting a little burned out on that game because I've, like, I've been playing it quite a lot. And, uh... I don't like men who turn me down. What else am I interested in these days? Just gonna pass. Spent nothing, did nothing. Tommy Boot, what happened to my face? I was riding my bike and I fell off and I, I, my beard all came off. I don't have any scars or any damage because the beard absorbed it all. That's what happened. Fake beard story counter. That's definitely the third one. <laughs> you know what? Do you guys watch Grand Pooh Bear by any chance? You guys watch the Mario Maker stuff? Wow. I'm a little I'm a little scared of this. So Grand Pooh Bear has a fake story about his name. People ask him where you get your where did you get your name from? And he has he he tells a fake story every time.
<laughs> oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. DG Thunder, I knew you'd say that because you are. I know you're a Mario Maker watcher. I actually watch a lot of Mario Maker on YouTube. It's like my YouTube thing. I don't even. I barely ever play the game. Okay, we are in big trouble. We are actually in big, big, big trouble here. So, okay, can Sheep really help us here? What do we do? What do we do? He's gonna beat me with a Rogner, perhaps. I think we have to get Figus out now. I think we have to be pushing like big time points. I'm still on eight cards, so let's not go crazy. Horizon Zero Dawn. Now that's a game. I, 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 that's a good game. I've played it. I'm a PS4 player. Fucked up. Fucked up, fucked up, fucked up. I made the same mistake I made kind of last time where I played uh, Zoltan, or I, I thought I had to play Zoltan on a specific row. Rather die than bend the knee to the Emperor. Oh, it's the one I needed the most! It's the one I actually needed the most. The first time I've ever gotten Skellige Storm when I needed it, that was the time I needed it. That is the time I needed it. It's always a disappointment when I get that one, but I just got that one. All shields gone. Wow. Wow. Time to sow, and a time to die. What a fuck my axe. Wyndham completely fucked by Nilfgaard, Rainfar and Nilfgaard. Oh yeah, right, yeah. So much for Atra. And Henry Bar Atra was removed from the game. Edna and Rosa. Who's gonna look after their needs, their well-being? Should have played tempering on it. Okay, well I can play now Barkley and Oak are a little bit more playable, because these are all dwarves. That, well. But this doesn't count as playing a dwarf, so I don't actually get the boost here, which actually means I won't be ahead. Whoops. It's a tie this way. May your blade never dull. May your hand never waver. Oh no! Well, this is kind of an awkward situation here because I need to play Barkley on this full row, and then Radea would end up being a 10 point play, and Oak would end up being a 7 point play. However, I think that either of those plays would be enough to take the game, and this could put me in a position where I just don't lose. I think I have to play this. This is specifically the play I have to make here because it forces my opponent to play the last card. And if the last card is as good as, I mean, then I don't want him. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Well, that was crazy. Shoop saved the day because that could be Rogner in his hand for all I know.
got a hearty hankering for Gwent. That sheep, though. So this seems like maybe the, a bad idea because it's all because uh, this is all shielded stuff. But it allows me to kill something with the aid of oak because it is still count as a card. Yeah, like this. I'll kill this. Well, I can kill this with uh, rebuke. Why didn't this take damage? Why didn't this take one damage? I wrote the book on that spell. Literally. Well, I, I actually, I didn't, I already had it one, so whatever. Why didn't it take damage? Yeah, but the armor should have gone. The armor should have been gone, right? All right, good game right there. Thanks so much. That shoop, right? Let's get this over with. Okay, so it's Squatel versus Squatel. Ragnarok, take care, man. Take care. I had a great day. You helped. We also missed some big cards in that game as well. There is there is some stuff that didn't really go our way in that game. We played into the boiling oil as well. That was bad. Welcome back, everybody who's coming back to the stream. We're still live. We're still going. You're going to watch the Expanse get to sleep? Yeah, it's getting, it's getting uh, it's midnight out there in, uh, in uh, Central European time. <clears throat> Understandable. We can do some pretty cool stuff with Shoop on red coin. Like, this might be a good situation for me to play deal three damage to all. Mata. This dance, you will never forget. A wee hunt. Don't juggle this. Don't juggle these. What's up, Pierre Payne? How you doing? Welcome back. Five hours. Yeah, on the dot right there. Five hours on the dot. But I'm not playing. Uh, I'm not. I'm. We're done with fight night. We're just playing now. Although, I don't know how many more games I'm going to play. Long day. Yes, isn't, that, isn't that better for me, though? Don't I get more value this way? That was definitely not worth the Malayne if I had to pick. If I had to pick. Fight Night was amazing. Fight Night was so good. It's good to leave. It's good to have like a, you know, the way. Fight Night's awesome. It's good to feel that way now, going out of a Fight Night. Vernosial. Big cards from the opponent. Big cards. My hand's so good, like, I can just... The only thing that I would want to use Call of the Forest on, I guess, is Figus. 
But if I use Call of the Forest right now on the Defender, I can set up for Zoltan. Although, I guess this sets up for Zoltan too. That's a pretty intense Vernasio. Like, isn't that what he pulled with? What the hell? Gotta say, all that's pretty weird. That whole thing was pretty weird. Look at this hand we have, though. Woo, baby. Yeah, it's 6 o'clock. That's right, 6.14. The Bear With Me deck. Hey, sp that's gr I'm glad it helped you, uh, Spirit Spiritian. Spiritland? I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure I'm pushing like crazy here. Would you rather I crushed your lead or rip it clean off? I think we're gonna make this I think we're gonna make this very uncomfortable for the opponent. We're gonna be playing a lot of resilience and a lot of points at the same time. Also, the vitality we give Zoltan carries over into the next round. By the by. The frightening blue coin makes us do crazy things. Peace with humans, abide us. No. That should be fine. So this is not melee? Okay. I don't want Eilerin to get me, but I think Eilerin's going to get me. But he'll have to use leader to really get me. It's worth the push. Yeah, I mean, Spirit Land that'll play on the Ghost in the Machine thing. I got you, I got you. So I play Zoltan. Dried Enchantress and pass. Zoltan carries the. Well, this also means that he could purify. Hmm. He could purify. The, I mean, he could have another purify here. That's good. We want to see this. I gotta say, we're in pretty good shape here, dudes. I'm feeling very strong. I'm feeling very swole in my muscles. <laughs> what if he's running a Syrah? What? Boosty dwarves. Yeah, this is good. So he's gonna get an Eilerin out here. He has to play all this stuff, right? This is Isengrim, I guess? Nerfed Isengrim? No, if it was Isengrim, he'd play the last one. Yay, then. Ay-yay-yay! We, yay. we will take back what was stolen! The mysteries of this world, boundless they are. Almost exhausted him. I really, I really want to tire him out. I want him to, I want him to be gasping for air. Gasping for air. A poison service announcement. This is it. Oh, I love my job. I love that. That's what we're looking for. So Zoltan does have. So his five armor and his two vitality will carry. No, it'll only be one Vitality because the opponent has to play one card here. The wilds shall reclaim your fields. 
Uh oh. He has to use his leader. You know, if he poisons Zoltan, I think the poison would carry over too. Oh shit, this isn't. Oh yeah, it is enough. He's in big trouble though, I think. He's in big trouble. You wish the opponent would play poison? Gulo, keep it to three sentences, please. <laughs> I don't have all day. My man. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, so yeah, see the vitality stays. The armor goes away. Maybe the poison goes away too. It might just be something about vitality and bleed. Let's go, let's go. Boosty, boosty dwarves. You know, if I'm really productive tonight and tomorrow, I could have like three videos lined up. That means uh, the videos would be auto publishing and I'd be able to start streams earlier. I don't even know what he said right there, but it was very hard to understand. Strong dwarves! Forge needs two charges to be really good? I mean, mm, it's not like, I mean, it's really similar. It's such an interesting ability. Like, I think that this one and Uprising are really interesting. Like, putting, putting a bronze card as like a keystone, and like not even a great bronze card. Tempering and Lyrian Scytheman. Like, they're not even great bronze cards. It's funny. I mean, I could play either of them. It's kind of the same difference, right? Opponent is dead. Oh, the opponent's in big trouble. Yeah, the opponent has played three very bad cards. The bleed was extremely, extremely uh, effective. You might even say super effective. You might even say it was super effective. That bleed was crazy good. Zoltan's resilience, very good. And there's the oak. Well, his oak won't be my oak. I've got armor everywhere, too. Nice. Nice. Start meditating, Geralt. Yeah. I like that he gets into the meditation pose, like, uh, from the from the game, from Witcher, like, The Witcher 3. Uh, it's actually Hearts of Stone, I think, he's meditating on the intro screen. Yeah? What? I'm going to call it while I'm feeling fantastic, and we're going to leave on a high note. What a great day. I really enjoyed Fight Night. It was actually awesome. Shouldn't